Esther's Living in the Woods show where every guest met us. Today we have a very special guest. His name is Vince McCarthy and today we're going to talk about the beer industry. Thank you, Esther. Thank you for having me back. This is fun. We're almost at the 4th of July, and I can't think of a better subject than beer for the 4th of July. So here you have all those beers. Yep, I got a few examples here. It's, it's a rough job, but I think we can get through it. <laughs> okay. How is it made? How is beer made? Beer is probably one of the easiest and simplest alcohol beverages to make. It's four ingredients. It's water. It's grain, it's malted, beverage, or malted barley, and yeast. And that's pretty much it. It's a pretty simple item to make. And you said there are like two types of beer? There are two types of beer in the world. Yeah. There are lagers and there are ales. Every beer in the world is a lager or an ale. What is a lager? What is an ale? A lager beer is a beer that ferments from the top to the bottom. Yeah. So think of a clock. Yeah. A lager goes counterclockwise. Uh -huh. An ale goes from the top to the bottom. Huh. So it goes clockwise. Does it make a difference? I mean... It makes a difference in the style of beer. Lagers tend to be a little bit crisper, a little bit cleaner, uh, a little bit lighter in style, and ales tend to be a little bit heavier and a little creamy, and it's, there are two types. The important question that people get mixed up on is, mm -hmm. yes, there are two types of beer in the world. There are hundreds of styles of beer. That's where you get the Guinness Stout, or the Sam Adams Indian Pale Ale, or what we have here, a Kona Pale Ale, or a La Fin du Mont Belgium style ale, or a Hefe Weissen, which is a German wheat beer, which is an ale. So there's, there's hundreds of styles of beer but there's only two types of beer in the world. How long does it take for beer to... Uh... That's up to the brewer, but it can take anywhere from two weeks to a year. Uh, some beers, they take a year to make. It, it's a slow process. Average is about 21 days. Really? Yes, so ma'am. So what is the lowest ABV and the highest ABV? Well, what's ABV? ABV? Okay, ABV, let's start with ABV. ABV is alcohol by volume. Yes. So that tells you how much alcohol is in that beer. So we have an example here of Le Fin de Mont, yeah. which is a Canadian Belgium style beer. Yeah. This is 9% alcohol. Then we've got Guinness Stout, over yeah. here, which is 5% alcohol. We have a Hefe Weissen, which is about 6.5% alcohol. So that's alcohol by volume. We have a light beer here on the end, which is 3.8% alcohol. Very light, refreshing, easy to drink for the 4th of July. <laughs> okay, so uh, why are there different colors? I mean, they all have different colors. Different colors. Well, let's start with this. Yeah. Let's pour a beer. Okay. <laughs> what we're going to start with is Ooh, the is Guinness. A, this is dark. Wow. The Guinness beer, which is a stout beer, extra stout. The next one to it is a Hefe Bison. The third beer that we're pouring is the Belgium style wheat beer. That's the one with the most. The alcohol. most alcohol in it. Yeah. Then this is a pale ale. Wow, look at this. And then this is the light beer or the lager. Wow, look at the difference. So the you can see the color difference there. Color, the Guinness roast the barley. They roast it to make it dark like coffee. Uh huh. That's why it's dark in color. 
Heffy bison. Yeah. More wheat added to the beer. So that's why it's not as clear as the pale ale. The Belgium beer is similar to the wheat beer, extra wheat to it, not clear, not as clear as the pale ale. Then you've got the light beer here on the end that they don't roast anything. A little bit, a very light in style, very light, refreshing beer, but it's almost clear. It almost looks like a Seven Up. Ah. So, uh, which country produces the most beer? That's a great question. I bet you, if we asked your audience, who makes the most beer in the world? Yeah. Everyone would probably say Germany because everyone thinks that the Germans are the biggest beer drinkers in the world. Did a little research yeah. and came up with the top 10. Yeah. And um, it was interesting. Number 10 was Spain. They drink a lot of beer in Spain. Really? All those bull fights and soccer games, there's a lot of beer drinking there. But then going number on. 10. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And number four or number nine was Poland. The Poles drink a lot of beer, uh, and they make good beer, and they make very good beer. Um, number eight was the country that is autonomous to beer, the United, you, you, um, United Kingdom. They drink a lot of beer there. Number seven was interesting. It was Japan. Really? The Japanese like their beer. And we drink a lot of the beer here in the United States. Ah, Mexico, second. then Russia. Yeah. Number four yeah. was the country that everybody thought was number one, Germany. Yeah. Number three was the Brazilians, and then the U.S. But the number one. U.S. is number two. Number two, the <laughs> number one producing the most beer in the world. China. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Think about it. Largest population in the world is China. They drink a lot of beer in China, and it's an inexpensive beverage to drink. Wow, it's a good business there. It's huh? a good business in China. Um, but the, the interesting thing about it is Germany, I was there two years ago, and Yes, they do drink a lot of beer in Germany, but they consider beer part of the meal. Why? It's because it goes with their food. It's what they drink at a young age. They drink their beer as we drink milk with our meals. And the beer has some type of uh, it's yeast in it. That yes, it the yeast good. is the main ingredient. They add extra yeast. Um, in some of the beers to make what it they call it. makes it look like some living things. That right. Have some. And they add yeast to it to uh, up the alcohol level, add extra carbonation to it, um, because beer, or yeast, excuse me, is similar to making champagne. When they add it to champagne, the byproduct of the yeast dying is carbon dioxide. It has nowhere to go because it's in the bottle, so it makes the carbonation that makes champagne. Beer is the same way. You'll see it on the label called bottled conditioned beer. They've added a little bit extra yeast to it. Wow. It'll be a little bit more zippy, a little bit more foamy. It'll have a little bit extra kick to it. Very refreshing. You see it mostly in English beers. They're wow. very famous for their bottled conditioned beer. They have like now gluten free and it's light. I mean, does it taste it's, differently? It's a little bit lighter in style. Yeah. It's still very good. There's a lot of them that are out there. Yeah. Uh, one of the first ones that I taste was uh, made in New York City yeah. called Hebrew. Really? And it was owned by a, um, a couple of guys that were from Israel. Really? And they made gluten-free beer. Wow. And you can still see it on the market. You know, if you tasted somebody blind on it and said, this is gluten-free, you would never know. It, it, they've come a long way. Gluten-free is good for people like me that are diabetics. Really? They can't drink a lot of beer because, let's face it, the first 
three ingredients are wheat. Barley, wheat, um, grains, things like that. Diabetics can't eat a lot of those or drink a lot of those. Those so turn into sugar. So gluten-free is less sugar in it? Yep, less sugar in it. Wow, I didn't know that. That's so it's, very interesting. It's, it's an interesting way they're doing it. Wow. So now there's all kinds of beer. There's uh, keg beer, draft beer, craft beer. What's the difference? <laughs> okay. There's so many. <laughs> well, what you said to me, there are two different questions. Keg beer and draft beer are the same thing. Those okay. are beers that come out of a keg. Okay. So when you go into your local drink uh, establishment for dinner or anything like that, and they've got the kegs and they're tapping the kegs or tapping the, um, they're tapping a beer. That's keg beer. Yeah. That's draft beer. That's beer coming out of a draft. Yeah, yeah. Um, craft beer. Is craft different. beer is is the interesting part of it. Yeah. Craft beers is the segment in brewing that is growing the fastest. Those are the small, independent people taking their time brewing beer in small batches. Um, use an example of Budweiser. Everybody knows Budweiser. Brewed across the United States. Uh, they make millions of cases of year a beer a year. A microbrew or a craft brewer will make hundreds of thousands of cases. I always use the example Budweiser, Miller, Coors, they spill more beer in a day <laughs> than a craft brewer will make in a year. Really? So. It, they're small productions. And there's a lot of craft breweries that started off very small and have gotten big. One of the best examples of it is Sam Adams or Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Sierra Nevada is from California. It's from Humboldt, California. Started off with a couple of guys making beer in Humboldt. It got so popular that they had people lining up at the brewery. I need a case. I need a case. And they started brewing more and more beer to fulfill their commitments around the United States. And now it's one of the largest uh, breweries. Same with Sad Adams. He started in Boston making his own beer, became very, very popular. More and more people wanted it. He expanded his thing. He still makes small batches, but he's a lot bigger than what he was 30 years ago. What's the most expensive beer? I mean, that's a good question. It's actually a Japanese beer called Sapporo. Sapporo makes a beer called, uh, it's a barley beer. Yeah, so it has like extra barley. barley in it. I don't think we're going to be buying cases of it for the 4th of July. <laughs> it's $110 a six pack. Wow. For six bottles of 12 ounce bottles of beer. Wow. There's another one. Called, why, why is it expensive? Because it's because it's crafted. It's probably a very long process mm. that it goes through. Very small batches. People desire. Um, if you thought about the first thing you learn in economics classes, what's the golden rule of economics? Supply and demand. Mm. They make a small amount. The demand is high, so we can get more money for it. And it's, it's probably one of those beers that only comes out once a year, and it's a, it's a testimonial to the brewery. Do you think that there's some beer makers ha have, like, secret ingredients? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do think there are some. There's some. It's a trade secret. Yes. And, yes, yes. you know, brewers are like chefs. Yes like a lot of things they're very proud of their product yes and they don't they don't want people to copy it this is their baby so they'll give you maybe 90 percent of the ingredients <laughs> but they're going to leave out that one ingredient or that two ingredient that really makes their beer extra special you know so yes i do i do think there are some things that are yeah, Kept because quiet. they're lining up. Uh, yeah, you know, they, want that, they want that special beer, and yeah. it's supply and demand. 
So what goes well with Bea? What goes? Well, you know, being the 4th of July in a couple of days, you know, hot dogs and beer are the best. There's nothing better. A good mm -hmm. hot dog and a good beer can't go wrong. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with the barbecues coming out, the ribs and all that, a nice refreshing beer is great. But there are some other items that just go great with beer, such as fish and chips. Really? Because of the batters and the oiliness of the fish and chips, you know, the crispness and all that, a beer is very cleansing to the palate. Wow. Um, yes. Other things that go great with beer, um, I've been at dinner where they've done beer dinners and they've done spicy foods, uh, Japanese foods. Um, Foods with a lot of <clears throat> flavors. Mm -hmm. Beer is very neutral. It's very cleansing. It goes well with it. Depends on what the beer is. Guinness Stout is a great beer for brisket. Obviously, St. Patrick's Day, everybody has a Guinness and a slice of brisket or um, corned beef, I should say, not brisket, corned beef. Yeah. It's a good combination because you've got that corn, that savory, that saltiness from the, the brisket being aged in salt, brined in salt. And that, that saltiness with the beer, the creaminess, it goes great together. Um, you know, it's, the, food and alcohol are a great combination. You just got to find the right one. Hmm. Did we talk about why those colors are the way they are, no remember. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, no, we didn't. We didn't okay. really talk about them. So a stout beer is a beer that has the barley is roasted a little bit longer. Yeah. I personally think we should try it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give your audience a little insight how we came across this. Okay. You just came. You and your husband just came back from a. A vacation, trip. Yeah. yeah. And you sent me that video of you trying all those different beers. Yes. And I love the expression on your face. This one's a little bitter. This one's a little sweet. <laughs> oh, this one I don't like, you know, and all of that. Which I, I chuckled at it because you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. They are different styles. But a Guinness, you know, it has, I'm going to pour it. And as you can see, the head on it right here, yeah. put this around, the head stays nice and foamy. Yes, but yes. you want to drink through that because yes. this has got a lot of flavor in it. Uh -huh. And when you taste it with the beer down below, it cream, it, that creaminess, lushiness comes through I with like it. I like the foam. Please, actually. try it. Oh my God. <laughs> I'll move on to the next one. Camera, look at me while she, she's pouring. This is a wheat beer or a Hefe Bison. Hefe meaning wheat. Um, it's a little bit bitter, huh? It's a little bitter, yeah, <laughs> but the head on it is very creamy. Mm, I love it. Um, this is a wheat beer, a Hefeweizen or half wheat uh -huh. beer, very cloudy because it has extra wheat in it. Yeah. There is a little bit of an orange rind nose to it. Yeah. And it has, you can really smell the hops in this beer. Mm. So, Mr. Cameraman, go to me as I pour the <laughs> La Fin de Mont. Esther, do your thing. <laughs> Gonna end up drunk. This is lighter a little bit. A little bit lighter. A uh, little bit more uh, crisper. Now, La Fin de Mont. Oh. Canadian Belgium style beer. This is one of the beers is that you saw on <laughs> your show and you really like this beer. It is 9% alcohol. But this is known as a be Bajel, excuse me, Belgium style tapas beer. You asked me a question, you know, when I talked about what is tapas, tapas refers to the monks in Belgium. They all make their own beer. They make very good beer. They make very strong beer. So this one's 9%. This has got a little bit of a kick to it. <laughs> um, but it is a wonderful 
accoutrement to a lot of different foods. This will hold up to a steak or a roasted pork or something like that because it's got some body to it. Um, can I taste you know, it? <laughs> uh, yeah, you can taste it. But this one's got more in the nose for it. There is more, um, I would say, almost caramel, uh, coriander, a lot of different flavors. Mr. Wow, Cameraman, let's go to the next one. 9% alcohol. Oh, yeah. It has different types of taste. There's a sweet, Ooh. there's a little bit Yeah, there's a there. little bit of sweet, there's a little bit of spiciness. Yes. Herbal spiciness, would you say? Yeah. A little bit? Yeah, uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to talk about a this pale is, ale. This is a small bottle, huh? Is it it's, the same amount? It's a 12-ounce bottle. Wow, it looks smaller. This is a 750. Oh. This is 500 milliliters. Mm. And this one is 500 milliliters, too. So they're all different styles of bottles. Mm. And I, uh, it's, it's a marketing tool. Um, I picked this one as a pale ale because it's probably the most popular microbrew out there in style why? of beer. Why? Pale ale because they're fresh. Oh. They're, they've got uh, a beautiful color to them. They're easy to drink. They've got a little bit of sweetness to it. When you smell this one, there is a lot of hops in this, in this beer. It just, it's, if you can only have one beer, this is the most popular just to have something that's refreshing and easy to drink. Mr. Cameraman, <laughs> let's go to the Michelob Ultra. Wow, this has all kinds of taste to it. That's yeah. the hoppiness coming through. Oh. Yeah, these are, this is what, if I have, if I'm allowed to have one beer a day, I like the pale ale. I really enjoy a good yeah. pale ale. Michelob Ultra. Um, Michelob is a brand that's been around for years. Yeah. They reformulated it into the Ultra or the Diet Beer, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Diet uh, Beer. Diet Beer, a little bit mean? lower in alcohol, oh. about, about four and a half percent alcohol, mm -hmm. maybe four yeah. percent. It has, it's definitely lighter in color. I mean, you can see right through this. I'm looking at the camera and I can see that the red lights are on. Um, very refreshing. Um, you can drink um, this and you just had your workout. I love the commercials that they've come out. You know, you have that great big workout, run 20 miles, and the first thing you do is have a Michelob Ultra. But there, it's very refreshing. It's very lighter in style. Um, on the nose, um, I get a little bit of hoppiness and, and um, not too much hoppiness. I get a little bit more effervescence. This is light a little bit. Yeah, Very light in style. So that's what we got. Um, what about the non-alcoholic? Okay, non-alcoholic beer. That is a great category. Non-alcoholic beers are beers that have all of the ingredients except they even have yeast in them. They just remove the alcohol by doing a central fuse. They spin out the alcohol. Uh, the interesting comment that I made earlier today when we were talking about this is it's equivalent of having a glass of orange juice. There's not much alcohol in them. It doesn't mean that you can sit there and drive down El Toro Boulevard with a O'Doul's in your hand and say, but it's not alcoholic. It's still considered alcoholic. It's still considered a beer. So how does it age? Some of them age better than others? Yes, they do. You can take a beer on an, a well-crafted beer and age it for a year. If I told you that there were beers that they put vintage dates on it, um, those are beers that will last 10, 20 years. Really? They make them, they're just lagered a long time. They're, they have extra yeast in them. It's the style that they make. One of the most famous is a beer called Sammy Claus which comes from, I do believe, Czech Republic. And um, it's meant to age forever. They've had them 
15 years old and they're still refreshing. I wouldn't do that with a Bud Coors or Miller. Those beers are meant to last 90 days. They're refreshing. It doesn't mean you can't drink them. They're just not going to be as crisp and clean. Is there a difference between canned beer and bottled beer? Personal preference. Um, canned beer, some people say it has an aluminum flavor. Um, bottled beer, some people say it's refreshing. It's all up to you. It's a personal thing. Yeah, so uh, there are different yeast also. I, I read somewhere there's so many different types of yeast. Yeast, too. yeah. Yeast. And, and, the, and that's up to the brewer, what he likes to use. It's kind of like being a winemaker, what style of yeast they like to use. Some yeast go better with this product, some yeast go better with that product. It's all up to the brewmaster. And uh, there's uh, different types of tap beer too. I mean, if you, if the, if you go into a brewery, the, yeah. there's so many different types, so there are different they types. Usually, they usually um, do it to, they make one, tap beer for their style of beer. They'll have an ale next to a porter, next to a, a stout, next to this, next to that. It's usually a way of showing that they're different styles of beer. Oh, wow, we're running out of time. It was so nice having you here. Oh, Esther, thank you for having me. I, I appreciate it. so much it. fun. <laughs> well, let's go have a happy fourth and have a beer with our ribs. Yes. Let's do that. Let's do that, okay. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for watching, and next time we'll have another interesting guest. Thank you. Bye.